Glenn Robinson III is doing his part on and off the court. When he's not playing for the Philadelphia 76ers, he's helping fatherless children and families with his Angels Are Real Indeed Foundation. We are pleased to be joined by Glenn Robinson III. Glenn, great to have you with us on the show today. Now, how did your own experiences and your own relationships shape your decision to try to help those who don't have a father figure in their lives? Yeah, uh, my daughter, she's two, and growing up, I know how important that is for me to be involved in her life. And I just thought, what better way for people to see a professional athlete changing diapers, doing these <laughs> things on a daily basis? You know, we want to create that in, in our everyday household. So we empower fathers and, and provide assistance to fatherless families, and it's been great. And we're in our first year, and, and, and it's been awesome. Talk to me a little bit more about the specifics of the foundation. What are some of the resources that you're providing families who are trying to navigate fatherless homes? We do a lot of top fives. So we'll do like top five diapers, top five TV shows or foods to cook with your kids. Um, a cool one that I have coming up is how to install a car seat. So um, I think that'll be a fun one because I know I did not know how to install a car seat my first time trying. Um, so little things like that, I think is so important that we try to encourage and empower our fathers and our communities uh, because they are needed. And I think it's something that's very important. And our children uh, should grow up with that, that father, foot, uh, father figure involved in their lives. Glenn, you and your team provided us with some eye-opening statistics. Some of those include 50% of mothers see no value in fathers' continued contact. 85% of children who deal with behavioral issues come from fatherless homes. 38% of fathers are denied visitation. Obviously, so many facets and varying opinions on this subject, it seems. Where do you begin? How do you decide with your team where to start when there are so many sides of this issue? It is. It's tough, you know, um, but I think by putting the father in the homes and putting more people aware of what's going on, um, it solves poverty levels. You know, our, our children are more likely to succeed and do well in school, um, get an education. And I think that overall success is just so important that we do have this involved in our daily lives. Um, and it's hard because there are so many statistics and there are so many angles that we could attack this thing. Um, and, and to be real, it is it's a sad, sad thing that uh, we have to encourage more people and, and to do some of these things in our communities, but it's well needed and we've seen a great turnout and great success so far. Uh, so it's hard to attack all the areas, but we start, we start small. We're trying to start with um, helping fathers and, and helping those families that don't have fathers involved in their lives. Um, we have provided um, resources, like you mentioned, and, and also furniture um, of, of helping families and helping them in their homes. And Glenn, you've hosted some events as well, Pumpkins with Pops, Ari's Feast is coming up as well. What is the mission of some of these events and how do you navigate those kinds of things in the middle of a global health crisis? One of my main missions is to, to allow our fathers to come and bring their families and, and really have that joy and, and, and have a day for our fathers. Um, Ari's Feast is coming up. We, we're giving away 200 turkeys to our community. Uh, we did it last year and it was a great turnout. So I'm very excited for that, um, along with Ari's Elves coming up um, this Christmas. Uh, we get our teachers to name a few students that are struggling or who need help or maybe don't have that father figure involved in their lives. And they'll, they'll, they'll let us know and then we kind of do like a secret Santa giving to those students. So I think that that's something that's coming up that we'll be promoting uh, this holiday season for Christmas. And I'm very excited about Ari's Elves. Some amazing initiatives there, Glenn. I do want to touch on the 76ers a little bit. With Doc Rivers as the new coach, what are you looking forward to in the upcoming season? I'm very excited to have Doc. Um, you know, I, I, being in Philly is a great hard-nosed city. Um, we just came from the bubble. Everyone knows we just finished up. Um, but I, I really had a lot of fun. The bubble was much better than I, than I thought or expected. Um, there were rough days, but being locked up in, in for two months in one room, um, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be, but there were times where it was it was a struggle. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure, but it, you know it's clear that it worked. A lot of other leagues kind of scratching their heads, wondering why they they didn't choose the bubble format themselves. But it looks like the next season is starting a little bit later in January. Do you have a sense of what things are going to look like when the new season starts, and would you be open to a prolonged bubble once again? I think, um, you know, I, I went and did my job with my teammates. It was a lot of fun. Uh, so I would be open, um, but we'll, we'll have a lot of discussions and talks because I'm not sure if everyone wants to do go through another bubble again. Um, but I'm very excited for the upcoming season. And Corona has changed everything amongst all of our lives. Um, but I think that we just have to find a way to continue to push through 
and to continue to empower and, and, and educate um, about our foundation. But also when we do step on the court, there's a lot of other um, things that matter now in, in our society and our world as well. So I think I take great pride and privilege of stepping on that court every night. Well said, Glenn. Thank you so much for your time today. That's NBA star Glenn Robinson III. Thanks again.